Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. The card we're going to be creating together today has a very unusual front. I'm using a small circle punch to create openings in a 3D layer to give you a peekaboo look at images that are mounted behind it. Here's a quick look at the card we're going to be creating together today, and I've got lots of tips to share with you, as well as teaching you how to use stencils or masks. If this is your first time joining me here on YouTube, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you click that small bell icon so you'll receive notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I upload a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. Here's a close-up look of that card we're going to be creating together today. Do you see how the image is recessed to the back? I can't wait to share with you how to create this. It's really different and quite fun. I'm going to start by protecting my work surface because I want to make sure I keep that clean because we're going to be creating a background here on this Mango Medley cardstock. And I'm going to be using a mask better known as a stencil. This comes from the Basic Patterns Masks and I want to show you some of the others that come in that same package. I absolutely love this flourish. Isn't that pretty? And you're also going to get this one with the silhouette of the trees. And finally, this one, which I think looks a lot like leaves. Lots of really beautiful stencils here to create backgrounds. I opted to use the polka dot today because I thought it looked really well with those openings on the front of my card. Now I'm going to be tacking these two together. And my favorite way to do that is with the Delicate Surface Frog Tape. Now you can purchase this at any hardware store. The yellow one is the one that you're after because it's going to have the lowest tack so it doesn't rip your card stock. I'm going to go ahead and rip off two pieces. I'm going to line my cardstock up on here where I want it. And once I'm happy with it, I'm going to flip it over and hold that in place. Then I'll adhere the tape to the back side to hold that in place. By placing the tape on the back, you're going to ensure that you don't cover any of the areas on the front that you want to stencil. I want to create a very subtle look to the background here. And I'm looking for areas that have darker and lighter shades. So I'm going to be using the tone on tone color of the Mango Medley. The beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So the ink pad is going to match the cardstock that matches our accessories, our alcohol based markers, and so on. I'm going to be using a sponge dauber. Your finger fits right up inside, which makes this really easy and convenient to use. Now I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. Now on stronger colors with more pigmentation, not necessarily this one, I'm going to recommend that you tap off first so that you get an idea of how dark it is before you go ahead and add color to your card front. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink this up. And I know that this color is light enough because I've been doing some experimenting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pounce some color on this cardstock and I'm just going to vary it around. I'm concentrating on adding more color in some areas versus others. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process, varying the tones that I'm going to be adding throughout this cardstock. You want to use a pouncing motion. You don't want to swipe because I found that if I swipe, I've kind of got a small swish mark inside those polka dots. That's especially important if you're going to be using a larger stencil or mask that has a larger open surface because those swipe marks will be prevalent. Quite often, you can't really see the intensity of what you're creating through the actual stencil or mask itself. So what I like to do is I like to lift it up and I like to take a quick peek behind there and then I can get an idea of where I need to add some more color and I can see I need to add more here in the center. So I'm going to add a little bit more color here and then I'll check it repeatedly just to see that I'm happy with it. I finished stenciling now, so we'll go ahead and close up that ink pad. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the stencil now from that tape. You can go ahead and rinse this right underneath the sink with tap water and then let it air dry. And then I'm going to flip this over and I'm very carefully going to remove that low tack tape. You can see what a beautiful job that has done here, creating some density in some areas and lighter than others. The next step is to create the openings. And for this, I'm choosing to use the one inch circle punch. Keep in mind that you can use any die or shape that you choose in any size punch. Where you choose to place the holes is entirely up to you. So I'm going to concentrate a little bit more here on the top and I'm going to punch a hole. I like to use my punch upside down so I can see where I'm going. And I'll place another one down here. And then for some visual interest, I'm going to look a little bit off center and place the last one here at the bottom. I have a piece of thick Whisper White cardstock here, and I'm using this because I'm going to be using alcohol-based markers. I'm going to line this up on the back, and I'm going to flip this over. And you can see that I cut this piece of cardstock a little smaller than the actual piece of Mango Melody. 
If you're here visiting from YouTube, you'll find a link down in the video description below that will lead you to all the pictures and the cutting dimensions for today's project. While I have that in place, I'm very careful to flip that over and hold it down and I'm going to use a pencil and then I'm very lightly going to trace the inside circumference of the circle so that I have an idea of the positioning of my stamp. Now I know that's going to be virtually impossible to see here on the video because I did make it quite light. But the next step is to go ahead and stamp our image. Since I'm going to be using alcohol-based markers, I'm going to be using the Memento ink. And I've chosen to use the small flower image from the Forever Blooms stamp set. You're going to be able to find this stamp set in the brand new Stampin' Up! mini catalog. Absolutely beautiful. Lots and lots of pages of great products. And this is a great time to shop because it's Stampin' Up!'s largest sale of the year. For any $50 in product that you spend, either from the mini catalog or the current annual catalog, you'll be able to choose a free product, and that's for every $50 that you spend. And there is no limit between now and the end of March. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're interested in receiving complimentary copies of those catalogs, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Contact Me. I'm inking up that image. I'm going to concentrate on placing that flower somewhat inside the circle. It doesn't have to be entirely in there, which makes this really wonderful because you don't have to be proficient on positioning it. And then my last one I'm going to do here. I'm going to hold this up, hoping that you can see some of those outline pencil marks. But you can see here that some of those flowers are inside and outside of the circle, which is exactly what I want. This ink is going to need to sit and dry before you attempt to erase it. That's a very important tip because even though it may look like it's dry, it can smear. So be very careful. Now that my ink is dry, I'm going to come up inside here and I'm going to use my eraser to erase those pencil lines. Now I want to give you a little tip about a mechanical pencil. I have tried lots and lots of pencils and this one by far has absolutely worked the best for me. This is made by Bic. It's the number two 0 0.9 millimeter pencil. The lead is very, very soft and the eraser works like a charm. There is virtually no residual pencil marks left. This is not an endorsement for Bic. I have just found this to become my favorite pencil when I'm paper crafting. I'm gonna use the same two colors of alcohol-based marker blends that match the cardstocks that we're gonna be using. So I have Rich Razzleberry and Mango Medley. There is a light and a dark shade for each of these colors as well as many others that are in the catalog. You're gonna see that they're dual-ended. There's a thick tip here, which is more of a brush, and a thinner end here, which I like to use for smaller images just like this. I'm going to start with the light rich razzleberry and again I'm going to use that small tip and I'm going to color in this flower. I'm going to color in the entire thing omitting some of the areas in the center. You're going to use these very much like you would any dye based marker. The beauty of the Stampin' Blends alcohol markers is that it's going to leave you a flawless finish which means there's going to be no streaking or overage of the color as you repeat it once it dries. Because they do have an alcohol base you're going to need to give it a few seconds or so for it to dissipate so that you'll have more of its true tone. Now while I have the marker out, I'll go ahead and fill in the bottom one as well. Now that that's finished, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the light mango medley. And this is the thin side of the marker or the chisel tip to fill in a little bit of color here inside the center of the flower. I'm not being very precise about this at all, as you can see. I'm just providing a little bit of density towards the center of the flower. While I have this marker out, I'm going to go ahead and color in this flower as well. Now to add some depth to this flower, I'm going to go to the dark Stampin' Blends marker in the same color. This is where we'll add some shading. You'll see that the artist has lines inside the image to give it some dimension. Those are great cheat marks. So I'm going to use those to my advantage by adding some darker color right over those areas. If those are not in the image that you're using, go ahead and just add a little bit of color to one side. I'll do the exact same thing now down here on this flower. To give this ample time to evaporate, I'm going to come over here now to this other flower and I'll do the exact same thing using the darker shade of the Mango Medley. 
I'm also going to take that darker shade now inside the center of my flower to create a little bit of deeper tone here in the middle. I'm going to go back to the lighter shade of the rich razzleberry and add a little bit of color here to the center of this flower. And while I have this marker out, I'm going to go back over these areas because what I'm looking to do now is blend the light and the dark together. Now it's not important for you to go over the entire image. In fact, if you don't, you're going to have better highlighting. You're going to have some areas that are lighter and darker than others. And keep in mind, once again, the alcohol marker is going to have to evaporate in order for it to become its true tone. I'm going to go ahead and finish these flowers, and I'm going to do the same thing on this flower here. I'm going to set that aside for just a moment, and I've cut myself a small piece of basic black cardstock, and this is where I'm going to stamp my greeting. For this, I decided I wanted a little bit of a chalkboardy type look, so I'm going to be using the Whisper White Craft ink. This is a pigment ink. Typically, you may want to heat emboss over this if you want a beautiful finish on it, but I'm looking for a more rustic chalkboard type image, so I'm going to use it straight up. Now, pigment ink does require extra time to dry, and it has a different consistency. Make sure that you tap your stamp gently, and then check to make sure that you've got equal coverage. Do you see here on the word all? It doesn't look like it's inked up very well. What you don't want is you don't want ink all over the circumference of your stamp, because otherwise that can transfer to your paper, especially when you're using dark cardstock. And this is going to get stamped here. So I'm gonna set this aside for right now, and then we'll come back to the card and we'll start putting these pieces together. I've cut a piece of rich razzleberry cardstock. Again, the color coordination is wonderful. I did score it in half right before you joined me, and I'm going to go ahead and fold that. And for that nice crisp edge, I'm going to go ahead and use my bone folder. This is where I'm going to adhere the actual white cardstock that we have our stamped images on. As a word of caution, because I've done this, make sure that your images are going in the right direction so that your circles will fit over the top. I'm going to be using my silicone craft sheet. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to add adhesive on the back side. I'm looking to center this the very best that I can on the front of this card. The next step is going to be our layer. What we're going to do is we are going to flip this over and we are going to be adding a sufficient number of dimensionals. Now, I don't want you to be chintzy on these. You're going to not only need to adhere them here along the perimeter of the card, you're also going to need to adhere them around these circles so that they don't sag and we get that proper 3D effect for this card once it's mounted. Once you're finished, you're going to go ahead and take off the paper backings. And the absolute easiest way is using my Take Your Pick tool. The paper piercing tool attachment is going to help me lift these off with ease. Not only that, it's going to wrangle them to make it easier for me to clean them up. Now what I want you to do is I want you just to hover over those images before you tack it down. I want you to make sure that you can't see any white cardstock around the outside edges before you tack it in place. And again, you're looking to make this as symmetrical as possible. Once you're happy, you're gonna go ahead and tack that in place. Remember our greeting? Well, we're gonna go ahead and add that as well. And we're also gonna use dimensionals. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off a few of those here. The hexagon shape makes it really easy for you to adhere these, especially on these small pieces, so you can get the even edges right along the cardstock. I chose to mount this to the edge of the Mango Medley cardstock that's here. The last thing I chose to do was add some sequence. Now I chose to mix and match my sequence on this card to get a variety of tones to play up both colors. These sequins come from the Gingham Gala assortment and they're purple and you wouldn't think that they would match very well, but against the Mango Medley cardstock, the color is almost identical. There are already glue dots on the back, so I'll use my paper piercing tool attachment to help me lift those. And I'm gonna place three on my card. I try to work in a wide triangle formation to make it interesting for the eye. So I've got one here, one here, and I'm gonna work another one down here. Finally, I'm gonna add a few from the iridescent sequin assortment. And you can see there's a beautiful array of colors here. So I've chosen several that I think will coordinate well with my card. Just before the video, I fished out a few of the color that I wanted, and I'm gonna go ahead and place them on my cardstock using that putty tip from that same tool. So I've got one down here, and again, I'm looking to create some interest. So I'm gonna add another here. This one I'll add here. You can choose to add these with glue dots if you have small ones, but I'm gonna use the fine tip glue. I'm gonna unscrew the cap, 
and you're going to find that it has a needled tip here, which I absolutely love for sequence. Before you get started, take a scrap piece of paper and make sure that the glue is flowing nicely. There's nothing worse than a big clump coming out, especially when you're working with sequence. I'm going to use my take your pick tool in one hand, and then I'll place a small dot. That's all you need for this sequin. And then I'll tack that in place. I'll do the same thing now with the others. And there we go. We have our card. I have one other card to share with you that is an entirely different stamp set and different color layout. Look at this. Isn't this precious? This uses the free celebration stamp set called the Gangs All Mirror. Adorable little expressions and some fun greetings on this stamp set as well. You're going to be able to redeem this product for free during Stampin' Up's largest sale of the year celebration. Which one of these cards today is your favorite? I would love to know. Leave me a comment below. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like. It certainly helps. And I look forward to having you join me next time. Have a great day. 